Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's second video. I've already done Solar Sunday, and you can find the video to that here on the homepage. Just scroll down a little bit, it's underneath the link as. It's uh, looking at everything to do with uh, Solar Cycle 24, what's happening on the sun right now, and also a little bit on Solar Cycle 25 as well. Really interesting uh, video. I only do two or three of those a year at Gazweb. It's uh, quite a special day. If you uh, want to um, have a look at that, I say it's on the homepage, uh, on Patreon right now, so just scroll down a little bit and some evening gas uh, and also uh, later on that will be placed on the solar uh, updates page there'll be a written report that goes with it as well you can't watch video all in one go it runs around 25 minutes and it's quite a long one um this video it's going to be sort of a truncated uh sunday roundup so not going to um get all the things together that we uh, look at mainly because solar activity has already been covered by solar sunny so we won't be looking at that but we are going to have a look at what's happening in terms of snow cover across uh siberia we'll also have a look at arctic sea ice the arctic and north atlantic oscillations and the weather next week to 10 days and that's probably where the real interest is because we are going to be in some very warm weather if not potentially a little bit hot uh, at the end of the week and just coinciding with the bank holiday weekend and talking of the bank holiday weekend there'll be the uh, latest update for that this evening that'll be around seven a clock where we'll be having a look at the uh, late spring bank holiday weekend in detail and also a very busy day as well as this also today we've got the second written report for uh, the Glastonbury Festival so if you're interested in uh, Glastonbury we haven't yet got to the videos for that they'll be coming up at the start of June but uh, a second re uh, written report uh for the glassby festival will be with you uh this afternoon so a lot going on better rattle through uh this video so we're going to start off looking at uh, si uh siberian russian snow cover and scandinavian as well this is uh, how things were looking this time last week when we did the gas of his sunny rounder last week in terms of snow cover across uh scandinavia and uh, Russia see quite a lot of snow still across central northern parts of Scandinavia and also backing uh, backing into central and northern parts of Russia as well this is a very late you have lost a little bit of snow but overall I think we are still running uh, quite significantly uh, above average particularly for northern parts of Russia and also northern uh, Scandinavia so again going uh, back to last week uh, that's how we were looking last weekend this is the latest obviously we have lost a little bit but still quite a lot of snow cover there across northern Scandinavia in particular actually a little bit has occurred down across southern parts of uh, Norway quite interestingly in terms of uh, the sea ice extent, this is how things are looking very latest. So uh, you remember about uh, a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, we was running quite significantly under 2012. This green dash line here is the uh, Arctic sea ice extent for 2012. That's the death spiral year. You'll notice how the crash occurred uh, through August and September of 2012 where we lost all of that Arctic sea ice. Uh, so we're at the start of the melt season now, and that's indicated by this uh, blue line just here. You'll notice that uh, about a month ago, we was running very significantly uh, underneath um, 2012. So uh, obviously we had less ice uh, back around March and into April uh, than we did at the same time in 2012. But I did say that probably doesn't mean very much for the melt season itself and what will probably happen is that eventually we will align the two years and then we may overtake 2012 it looks like that's beginning to happen now so uh, you see the very latest of where we are with this blue line is that we are still under 2012 but not by anywhere near the same extent it looks like we are closing up to uh, 2012 quite rapidly i suspect what will happen is that uh, eventually in the next few weeks we will align with 2012 and then we'll probably in the end do something like that although of course we could have a death spiral uh, year again in terms of arctic sea ice you can never tell what the melt season is going to be like for any one year but uh, 2012 was a very dramatic uh, melt season in the north pole so i assume it's unlikely We'll uh, see anything as dramatic as that. But as I say, you uh, never know. But it does look as though right now we are getting closer to 2012. And I would suspect we probably will align with it before too much longer. 
Talking of the Arctic, this is the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart. So uh, the black line here tells us where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation, the red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. And then this is just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere in the North Pole. It isn't driving anything, it just tells you what the uh, atmosphere is doing. So we've had quite an extended run of negativity of the Arctic Oscillation, this black line just here, uh, dipping down into quite substantially negative territory. Where we are right now is around neutral. It looks like we're going to push things up to positive Arctic Oscillation condition in the next week before dropping back uh, towards neutral. But it could be that this run of negative uh, AO conditions has uh, come to a fairly early end, actually. It uh, could have run uh, for a little bit longer than this. It would, would typically expect it to have run for a little bit longer than this. But it looks like we're uh, back to neutral and possibly even on the positive side. So it looks like we're losing the blocking signal that we had uh, back in uh, April and through the early part of uh, May as well. The NAO is uh, the same idea. So again, it's just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere, this time in the Atlantic as opposed to the North Pole. The black line again tells us where we've been with the North Atlantic Oscillation. The uh, red line is where the GFS ensembles are forecasting North Atlantic Oscillation to go. Now, this is quite interesting because... Uh, again, we did go very negative with the NAO uh, a couple of weeks ago. We're still on the negative side, closer to neutral, but still negative with the NAO. And actually, the GFS ensembles are forecasting the NAO to uh, stay negative uh, through into the start of June. So we're losing the blocking signal over the pole by the look of what the Arctic Oscillation is doing. But in terms of what the North Atlantic Oscillation is doing, it looks like the setup is still uh, reflecting uh, kind of a block setup with high pressure probably closer to uh, Iceland and low pressure down uh, around the Azores, which is uh, a negative. North Atlantic Oscillation set up. The flip of that, of course, is a positive NAO where you have low pressure around Iceland and high pressure through the Azores. And that's the typical uh, setup. So it is a little bit interesting, actually, that the Arctic Oscillation is losing the blocking signal, We're losing the blocking signal for the pole, but the NAO, for the time being, looks like it's staying on the negative side, albeit closer to neutral compared to what we had a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is the Central England temperature from Hadley. This is provisional up to uh, the 17th. It's been a little while since this is uh, updated. Not sure what the delay is on getting this updated. On the 17th, this uh, the CET was standing at 11.8, an anomaly of around 1 degree above average. I would assume that's probably ticked down a little bit from there over the past uh, few days. It would be interesting if we could, uh, could have an up-to-date uh, look at the CT. But this will be taking off, I think, over the uh, next week to 10 days because we are in for uh, a really warm spell of weather. These are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles the next two weeks. The red line here is the upper air temperature average. And we're around average today, but the trend through the early part of the coming week is up. And then it looks like we're in for a very warm spell of weather in the second half of the week. Now, as we go through to the start of June, that's this period just here in the extended range, of course, we do see the temperatures then beginning to slide uh, back. But certainly the last week of May looks like it's going to be very significantly warmer than average. We might see temperatures going up on the surface, might see temperatures going up to around uh, the mid to upper 20s Celsius. That's going into uh, the 80s Fahrenheit potentially at the end of the week. A lot of dry weather coming up as well. So uh, we've had this uh, more unsettled interlude, but uh, it looks like we're going back to the drier conditions for the uh, final week or so of May. Uh, through to the start of June, the precipitation spikes are coming back with this drop in the temperature. But of course, that's right at the very extended range of the model. And uh, I think best to not take that too seriously. The outlook for the next week to 10 days looks very warm and dry. Temperature anomalies are reflecting this. So this is the temperature anomaly from the 21st to 29th of May. It's coming out very significantly warmer than average, not just for the UK, but for most parts of Western Europe as well. You notice the cold temperature anomalies are over in the east. So really west split with these temperature anomalies across Europe in the week ahead. The precipitation anomaly is drier than average. So a warm, dry week coming up. Uh, a lot of high pressure 
building in. So this is what's going on then. And this is the GFS chart for Thursday. We've got high pressure centred over the top of the country. Slap bang over the top of us, bringing a lot of dry and warm weather, uh, unsurprisingly. That high pressure begins to uh, try and reach to the north through into Friday, but the air is coming in from the south southeast. so there may be quite a bit of cloud with this high pressure early in the week, so around Tuesday, Wednesday, might get quite a bit of cloud. But as we get through to the second half of the week, Thursday, Friday, I think we'll bring drier air up from the continent, probably a lot of sunshine, and that's when the warmest temperatures could occur as well. Now we go through into the bank holiday weekend, this is Saturday, and that high pressure is sitting to our east. We've got a heat low developing there across uh, Spain and the Bay of Biscay. That's trying to push northwards. It looks like it's a little bit of a Spanish plume beginning to bring hot air, but also unstable air up from the south. By the time we go through to Sunday, that, uh, has that low pressure, the heat low, from Biscay has formed into proper area of low pressure to the west of the country. You would assume that's bringing thunder up from the south, so there might be some sort of thundery breakdown of this uh, warm weather next weekend. By the time we go through to Bank Holiday weekend, we're in a different air mass, still a lot of high pressure, but the air's coming off the Atlantic, so it will be a little bit cooler and fresher by the time we get through to Bank Holiday Money. But that's a pretty decent chart for Bank Holiday Money. The ridge is still extending in from the Azores High, so a lot of uh, dry weather coming in with that. And as we go through to Day 10, this takes us to Day 10, which is Wednesday the 31st of May. Um, still a lot of that uh, warm weather going on, Possibly, again, some sort of a thundery low type feature just there. Uh, but overall, I think still a fair amount of high pressure around going up towards day 10. Uh, these are the upper air temperatures for Thursday. You see the 10 Celsius ice firm is across the UK then, so it does look very warm with temperatures going into mid-20 Celsius dependent on, sun, uh, on sunshine. Uh, through to uh, the end of week of the weekend, this is Saturday, you see still very warm with those upper air temperatures, but 15 Celsius ice firm is across the northern parts of uh, France, attempting to get into southern England. If you get 15 Celsius ice firm, you're probably going to get temperatures into uh, the upper 20s Celsius by the latter stages of May. Uh, and then that uh, 15 Celsius ice firm does actually make it in across the country by trying to go through to midday or uh, midnight, I should say, on Sunday. Although this is when everything's getting very unstable, so there will be a lot of humidity, instability associated with that and the potential for rain and thunder. By bank on Monday, you notice we're going into cooler and fresher air mass from off the Atlantic. But the warmth never really goes away from the far south. It does start to push back a little bit, actually, as we go through to day 10, Wednesday, the 31st of May. And again, it is looking quite unstable at that point as well. Temperatures are looking like this. So for Thursday, the GFS is suggesting temperatures, perhaps a little bit on the disappointing side, given the setup, of around uh, 20, 21 degrees for most places. Remember, that is very dependent on cloud. So I suspect the GFS is seeing a fair amount of cloud. If it's overdoing the cloud and it's more sunny, then you're going to get temperatures going into the mid-20s Celsius. Uh, moving through to uh, Friday, we see that temperatures are lifting up a little bit more. So this is suggesting temperatures go to mid-20s Celsius on Friday. And the general idea with these charts is that you normally add 2 or 3 degrees on. So if you see sort of 24, 25, you can normally increase that to around 27 or 28 degrees, so that's going up into the low 80s Fahrenheit on Friday. That continues into Saturday as well. Saturday could be the peak because by Sunday, that cooler, fresher air is beginning to arrive after probably some sort of a thundery breakdown. By Bank Holiday Monday, temperatures are back closer to average. Still very pleasant. Don't be thinking that Bank Holiday Monday doesn't look very good. It does. It looks a nice day. But it is cooler and fresher with temperatures back to the upper teens or low 20s uh, Celsius. That's pretty good still for the end of May. Uh, finally, the ECWF. So high pressure is centred over country on Thursday, bringing loads of dry and warm weather. That high pressure slipping to our east as we go through to uh, Saturday, bringing very warm, if not hot air up from the south, but it is starting to turn unstable and then we've got that low pressure uh, developing over the country by midnight on Sunday again some sort of thundery breakdown is probably taking place uh, with that and then we go through to uh, Bank Holiday Monday where cooler fresher air then 
is topping in from the Atlantic, albeit still with the high pressure influence, so a lot of dry weather just feeling cooler. And then as we run up to day 10, this takes us to day 10, which is Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday the 31st of May. Still lots of high pressure dominating, so it still looks very dry and pretty warm as well as we're going through to the end of May. It looks like we're going to be finishing the last week or so of May with a lot of dry and warm weather, albeit there is that thundery breakdown possible uh, around Saturday or Sunday. So uh, that's how it's looking. If you uh, like warm weather, we've got some warm weather coming up, probably our first proper burst of uh, summer, and uh, we may get a little bit of thunder over Bank Holiday weekend as well. Remember, there will be an update for the Bank Holiday weekend uh, this evening. That'll be, I think it's our fifth one, so uh, have a detailed look at Bank Holiday weekend then. Uh, and also later on today, we've got uh, the second written report for the Glastonbury uh, Festival. And uh, don't forget to check out Solar Sunday if you haven't done so yet. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.